are watching West Harper Community yeah. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello, and welcome to Art Talks. I'm Joanne Bauer, the host of the show, and today I'm thrilled to have three guests with me to my left. I have Carlos Hernandez Chavez, who is a muralist, a painter, a photographer, a musician. We're going to have lots to say to him. Next to him is Christine. Christine Delenta, who is a photographer as well, and she's involved with a collaborative project with my third guest, Ben Parker, who is a paper sculptor. He does origami and tessellation and lots of things that we haven't explored on this show before. So I want to start then with you, Carlos, and I want to talk a little bit about how we recently met at your show at, the, at Art Walks in Hartford. Yes, I was uh, uh, selected to exhibit at uh, the Art Walk Gallery in, yes. at the Hartford Public Library. And the exhibit is a collection of works that I created uh, this past year, most of them actually, in the rainforests in Puerto Rico. Talk to me a little bit about the inspiration of the uh, rainforest. Back in 2004 and five, I spent uh, a couple of months each year uh, starting this this particular series, although the the idea of painting with leaves started with me around 1999, 2000, uh, and I just wanted to pursue it a little further. Mm -hmm. um, I have a uh, a close relationship with with Puerto Rico. When I first got here back in '67, there were no other Spanish speakers, but but Puerto Ricans that I knew. There were others, you know, Peruvians and Colombians, but they were not in, 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 in numbers like Puerto Ricans. Uh -huh. um, and um, um, I became, uh, with my late first wife and I, um, foster parent. And uh, eventually we ended up adopting five children of Puerto Rican oh, heritage. Nice. So um, that, just to say that I was very welcomed by the, by the Puerto Rican community. And I befriended many people, obviously, and I was invited to visit Puerto Rico. And then um, from there, I uh, started um, dabbling with, with the leaves, using the leaves uh -huh. as, as my medium on canvas and on paper. Right. Wow. So there's quite a bit there that we could, a few threads that we could follow. I'm curious about what brought you to Hartford originally. Because I know you're trained, you're trained in Mexico, right? Your, yes. your arts training? Yes, mm -hmm. at the uh, Academia de San Carlos, which is the mm -hmm. oldest academy of the continent. Mm -hmm. That's where Diego Rivera and all these people yes. studied. Yes. And I was lucky to have studied at the same, oh. in the same studios. Oh my and goodness. And with his contemporaries as my, as my teachers. Oh my um, but when I, I came here when I uh, was in Mexico, I played rock and roll. <laughs> self-taught, I'm a self-taught musician. And uh, in one of the, the performances I met, uh, this uh, woman who later became my wife. Uh, um, but uh, the short of it is that I came to do an audition for this uh, British group. I don't know if any anybody remembers the animals, but... Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, I, and I never made, the, made it to the, to, the, uh, to the audition because of the distance that we were in California, and I came to Connecticut, and with $100 in your pocket, I know. <laughs> no, it doesn't, no. doesn't cut it. But Not anyway, back so, then, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's what brought me to Connecticut, um, the, the, uh, the tryout, but never happened. But having been um, uh, in, in college, so I, I ended up working for the, for, the, for the municipality and raising a family and what have you. 
Now, and did you say that your that your wife at the time was a performer, a musician as well? Is that, no, was that part? no, okay. no, she was a, she was a tourist. Okay, yes. <laughs> she was she a was tourist, a tourist <laughs> and yeah, and she was she was visiting Mexico oh. and and she was at the place where I was performing. Oh. Yeah. When you say painting with leaves, is that any part of the process or that's the subject matter? That is the process. That is it's the process. The, yeah, Can you, you talk a bit about it? Yes, I, I, I think the uh, a tropical vegetation is, is just so uh, lush and so uh, uh, happy, I guess. Uh, okay. It conjures up a lot of things, you know, uh, uh, light, fun, joy, life, all those, those good things. And as a matter of fact, uh, probably as a subconscious uh, way of, 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 for me to thank my association with Puerto Rico and Puerto Ricans, I decided to, to bring a little bit of, of Puerto Rico back here in the, in the initial years in 2004 and five when I did those. And I had some exhibits. Uh, at that time, I called it the skin of the earth. What I do, I use the, the leaves, the actual leaves, yes. and I apply paint and okay. then I do uh, sort of like a mono print. Like a, yes, a printing yeah, I process. prepare the paint, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the papers and the canvases first okay. uh, with different kinds of colors and in some layers and then uh, apply the, the, uh, the leaves uh, in some in impromptu compositions basically. Right, okay. So that, that actually explains to me some of what I was looking at. So it really is like a print, a mon mono print over as you said, your canvas or your paper. Yes. And of course, we're still in the wintry months here of Connecticut, and mm -hmm. so thinking about Puerto Rico and thinking about light and color is just quite a bit of fun, as you said. And, and for your show to be there, your show will go until when at the Hartford Library? It's up until March 15th. March, March 15th is a Saturday, it's the last day, yes. so okay. please come and Right. Now, uh, sometimes galleries have closing receptions, but I don't think they do that at the Hartford Library, do they? Will you mm -hmm. have any kind of closing? No, I don't think so, but uh, I was uh, given a, a reception, an opening reception, yes, which was very which well was received, wonderful. and you were there. Yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. I am also curious about your music and how, or if, the music informs the art, the visual art, and back and forth. Do you, do you, how I, does it connect for you? Well, it connects on its own, really. Um, I am, music is, is something that I have the urge to do. I have to do yeah, music. Yeah, they have to do yes, it. Uh, more than visual art? More well, of a uh, have visual art is a little more discipline, although music is very disciplined as well. Right. You know, but sure. when, when you have a, a more of a leaning towards one than other in terms of the, the passion. The passion, see, of course. Uh, I am passionate about both, but I think that music has the, the added element of the physical aspect of performing uh, yeah. and interacting while, while playing. So I don't play solo. I always yeah. play with groups right. or duets at least. Right. So and I have actually now, I remember, I have heard you're your playing, uh, I think, well, in the summertime in particular, I think, uh, mm. in relation to Butler McCook House, perhaps at one point? Uh, yes. Right. So d talk just a little bit about where you perform in, in Hartford or Greater Hartford or even in the state or the region. Where, where might we hear you and well, your groups? Well, uh, you, your you mentioned you know, that, that uh, up until 2010, I was heading a, uh, a group, uh, a Latin American music group, and uh, we performed at the, old, uh, the uh, Charo Cultural Center, the yes. Butler McCook uh, uh, Museum, House and Museum, uh, okay. the Eman uh, Emmanuel House. Also, we went to, to um, uh, uh, places where people don't have uh, the ability to go out, for example, like uh, um, elderly homes. Right. We performed right. there as well. Uh, and uh, festivals and concerts and receptions, you name it. Oh, I mean. Nice. Um, I also play um, bass for this uh, flamenco group, uh, the Val Ramos Flamenco uh, Ensemble, and we have played at the at the International Festival of Arts and Ideas in, in New Haven. Haven. We will be playing this June as oh, well. Oh, tell us just yes. about that. Is there a specific date, or how do you know the date? Uh, not offhand, I have it in my calendar. Okay, and, but, so uh, we should look June. for. 
for your group at the International Festival, which takes place usually the last two weeks in June in New Haven. In New Haven, yes. Wonderful. Yes. I love that festival. Yes, you know, it it's so well, international. Yes. <laughs> it, it really is. <laughs> it yes, is. Yes. It is. Good. Anything else that's coming up in terms of either your music or your art? Um, well, not uh, <coughs> until next year I was invited to exhibit at the Windsor Art uh, Center. Oh, sure. Uh, right. It's a wonderful place as well. It so is. I, uh, and I think that this next exhibit is going to be a different. Um, well, that's what I was wondering. A different Will it be this. brand new? It's, it's going to be all brand new, yes. Uh, and I want to have the theme be music, since I'm a musician. Right. It's uh, really and cool. I have lots of ideas about, you know, how to, you know. And, what, you'll, what and you'll probably play there, too, won't you? Usually um, the Windsor Art Center creates events, right, around the show. Yes, right? although it's, so it's, it's, it's a little tricky because I think, some, uh, for example, at this, uh, at this opening at the Hartford Library, um, I proposed that I bring my ensemble. I said, uh -huh. no, 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 we want you to, to, to mingle with to people. To mingle and talk so <laughs> about your art. I said, oh, well, but I always well, like to play, yeah. Uh, right, and, and uh, well, some places would definitely be more open to, to that. I, I'm yeah, sure well, you know, we'll see how, we'll see you know, how they wanted we'll to it. handle it. But, you know, that's, I'm looking forward to that one. It'll be in the, in the fall of uh, 2015. Uh, and uh, I am hoping that I can really um, uh, generate a, a body of work of drawings. Most of drawings? Mostly drawings, yes. Oh, so that, will it be, uh, we've talked, you've talked quite a bit about color. Now, if you're saying drawings, will that be more black and white or will it also be color drawings? Or stay is that a secret? Stay tuned. We'll have to <laughs> see what happens. We'll have to see what that. Yeah, what no, happens. color definitely will be there. Yes, but it's the focus is not going to be color. It's going to be the music. Okay, I want to just just quickly give you an opportunity, if you want, to talk a little bit a little a little bit about how your art relates to your concerns for human rights. Because I know you've done murals. I know there's one in City Hall, Hartford City Hall. For many years, I have I've been. Uh, uh, addressing issues, you know, that uh, affect many people around the world, um, which to w uh, that we can relate to. Um, the mural that you saw is a uh, depiction of uh, of my family. Really, oh. many came as uh, uh, migrant farm workers, and uh, and the stories that they tell me um, are just incredible. You know, and. The, the mural uh, has a depiction of, of, of uh, workers in a sugar beet field. Yes. And that is the scene in, in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Oh. Scotts Bluff, Nebraska is uh, where there they have some sugar factories. Okay. And uh, the short of it is that uh, my parents met in Scotts Bluff. Oh. And uh, eventually they went back to Mexico. Although my mother was born in Nebraska, but my father was not. My father was born in, in my hometown in Leon. But eventually they, they uh, married in Mexico, and uh, we were all born and raised in Mexico. Um, the, there have been a number of, uh, of pieces that, that, I have that I have addressed. Uh, uh, homelessness, uh, HIV AIDS, um, uh, uh, teen pregnancies and all uh, ex uh, um, uh, capital punishment. The big uh, issues. Oh, the, the big issues, the big you know. Issues. And uh, <coughs> and one of the one of the exhibits that I that I have two pieces from at the show at the Art Walk Gallery okay. uh, were uh, exhibited in Athens. I was invited to to exhibit in okay. Athens, and it was primarily the the theme was uh, oppression, okay. uh, uh, oppression of women, oppression of children impression of men and that kind of stuff uh, and, and in some aspects you know what role religion plays in, 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 the, in that in issue oppression. as well yeah. yes <coughs> uh. so certainly we could invite you back here there's so much to say uh, on these bigger themes too and when you <coughs> turn to the the show that's music that's that's art and music connected We'll, we'll, we'll have that discussion. Yes, and I think that uh, the, the current uh, show really speaks about, you know, the, 
trying to explore other aspects of, 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 of myself, you know. I mean, we can always address the hard issues and so on, right. but there is other sides. Right, that, explore, that, that's more know, and joyous and playful. I, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. I want to turn to, to you, Christine and Ben, and ask you to talk a little bit about the collaborative project that you have currently, uh, well, will be at the uh, Photosynthesis Gallery in Manchester. And everyone is invited. Everyone. So this is in Manchester. And am, am I correct to say that there's a new, there's a, a sort of a new carved out gallery space? It's been renovated. It's uh -huh. been made larger and it's been given a new name. It's Gallery 136 and a half because believe it or not, that's the address. <laughs> <It's so laughs> Great. It's 136 and a half Pine Street in Manchester. Pine Street, right. And it's not necessarily easy to find, is it? No, I it's mean, a little right. bit. It's a little bit difficult yeah. to find, but okay. um, it's right where the um, mill buildings that yes. have been converted into apartments and where the Manchester Historical Society is. It's very close to, okay. to those Good. landmarks. And you have some working, uh, some space there where you do some yes. photography. Yes, I've been making my own artwork there for about a, a year. And the reason I do it there instead of setting up a home darkroom is that my work isn't limited to one type of photographic process. I might okay. be doing a digital project and then maybe an alternative process or an, a historical process. And so there, the lab is set up perfectly where there's a space and um, resources to do all those kinds of things. So, so you can just move from one exactly, to another. I, it's something I wouldn't be able to set up in right. my own in my own studio, it just wouldn't it wouldn't work right. that way. So, so, so you uh, Ben was saying. So you had some initial you had some initial photography going on, right? And that's how you met. Yes. Or, the, or thought about the collaboration. Maybe if I could oh. start by explaining what yes, a please do. photogram yeah. is. Right. So this is an image made on light sensitive paper, and. There's a technique called a photogram, which has been around since the beginnings of photography. And it's usually the first process that photography students learn right. as well. I, I still have one. Oh, you do? a darkroom class yeah. back They're at the University of Hartford. Simple to do, but they can be so, so beautiful. So yeah. um, what happens is the paper's sensitive to light. So if you lay an object on top of it and expose it to light, wherever it's covered will remain white or gray. And wherever the paper is exposed to light will turn um, dark in proportion to how much light it received. So what I discovered was I acquired this paper. It's a vintage paper. It's from, it was made in the 1950s and 1960s. In fact, it expired in 1967. Oh my goodness. And I acquired two boxes of it. And it was designed, interestingly enough, to be folded without cracking for that express purpose. And the reason was that um, when people would submit reports that were on typewriter bond paper mm -hmm. and they wanted to include photographs, this is the same weight of paper so that oh. they could flip through it. It also was used for French folded greeting cards and for, for map making. So I got this paper, I knew it could be folded, and I thought, well, there's art somewhere there and it's up oh to me to dis goodness. discover what to do with so it. So then you went on a search for someone who folds paper? Well, yes. Wow. <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> that was uh, serendipitous that we ended ended up working in the same spot and that it's such a, the photosynthesis environment is so conducive to collaboration and feedback between the artists so that is how we yeah. met. Now you've been you've been working there for a couple uh, months before we met. Uh, yeah, I it was believe. we started working together in the fall. So did October. you meet Ben or did you first see his artwork? I um, or, or was it I both at the same time? Can tell the story well, so the story. I um, must have been November or late October last year, I, I came. Um, I moved down the street from photosynthesis oh, yeah. and started looking for a, a studio space and uh, contacted Chris. You know, I'd known him for a few years and said uh, he had said that there was a studio space up in the the upstairs. Uh, so I said, any any interest? And he said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll work something out. And um, so I was sitting there working. Uh, I'm writing a book at the moment. I'm sitting right. working on the and book. Right, and you can tell us the title of your book, too. Oh, yeah, it's going to be called uh, Six Simple Twists, The Pleat Pattern Method of uh, Origami Tessellation Design. Right, and that's a mouthful. <laughs> it is, yeah. Right. I had to Most take a people, I there. think, know origami. 
Yes. But not necessarily the word tessellation. So I, d I definitely want you to tell to tell us oh, about yeah. that. But I don't want to interrupt your story. Okay. So if you can work that in. <laughs> um, so I was working on the book, mm -hmm. and uh, Christine comes in. I seem to work on more of more of your project, um, and talking with Chris. And Chris basically says, you know, you should you should talk to him. And <laughs> Right. So she did. Well, that's what's and so that's important about the arts and about the artists collaborating and the and the arts talking to one another. Yeah. It's so important. It is. Yes. So tell us, uh, you have some samples here yeah, and so some images that you've sent. Tell us a little bit about how in the world you do this. So this is a this is a tessellation. This is folded from a single hexagonal sheet of paper. Uh, there's no cuts, no glue, except the cuts used to get the initial hexagon. Um, if you're able to, to zoom in here, there's uh, little triangles all throughout this, right. and that kind of uses... And, and I saw you doing, demonstrating some of this at Open Studio, right? Yeah. You were down at Art Space, and you were actually doing it. Yeah. And you, can you do a simple kind of in-the-air yeah, demonstration so for us? I kind of had hidden under here. <laughs> there's this guy. But <laughs> you know, stealthily, I had a grid underneath this, and... This is something I'd prepared before I, I got here. All these little triangles were done by hand. So to kind of... Oh my goodness. I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but every one of these little, little triangles. And it's so incredibly uniform. It's so amazing so that it's... So first you're folding to create the triangles. Right. A lot okay. of folding, a lot of unfolding, okay. a lot of folding in the opposite direction. Oh my goodness. Um, but then you can use that as a guide to... You have to have an, an incredible patience. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> I mean, I've been doing it long enough that it's... Uh, right, I read that you've been doing it since childhood. Yeah. Uh, so th I mean, just, uh, just basic. You know, so yeah, now, you know, okay, you know, so what you're doing is almost like watching someone knit. You're, you're, your hands there's are doing a lot of it automatically. There. Um, so, like knitters and um, crocheters, people like that, once you get the hang of it, once you get the hang of the process, you can you can do that kind of stuff watching the television or having a conversation. It's the same thing here. If you know, if you know the pattern you're working with, this is one of the things that I typically start with. It's a hex twist. Yeah. And it's six intersecting pleats, and this is what I'm going to talk a lot about in the book. Six intersecting pleats that make a, a hex twist. So is that one of six twists of your book, or is that yes. six of six? That's one <laughs> yep. of six. That's one of six. Okay. Um, and there's different ways of tiling it. Once you get get the hang of geometric tilings, uh, you can start to figure out ways mm -hmm. to split pleats. It's incredibly impressive. And in fact, I remember you were wearing a tie. Yes. You have some wearable <laughs> paper art. I need to make another one of those. Sculpt That's sculptor. Um, so, th so okay, and then jumping ahead a little bit to the way you collaborate, the two mm -hmm. of you. So would you like to describe it? Um, yeah, people do... First, the first question we all always get is, well, what? Just what is this thing? It's um, so. I think the best way to explain it is if we look at a folded piece, which is this right one? there. Right yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what um, Ben works with a, a a paper called elephant hide, and that's what that paper looks like folded. And what we did was we um, Ben took the photographic paper and he folded it in the darkroom, which means not only is he doing this incredibly intricate kind of folding, he's doing it in very low light. Yeah, <laughs> very, right, very right. bad <laughs> low light vision just and in general. Uh, so. we, we, there was right, a piece so that it he... It really depends on your fingers. Yeah. Touch. It took uh, 10 hours to fold one of the pieces in the And this was the so. vintage paper that you yeah. had found. And yes. is that what we're looking at? N this is just the regular, not just the, but this is the paper that Ben usually works with when oh, he does okay. his origami pieces. Okay. And what he did was he took this piece of photo paper, oh. folded it like that, and then we exposed that to light. So what happens is wherever there's a buildup of layers and density, um, it masks from the light. So it's sort of like oh, the paper okay. makes a photograph of itself. It's a photogram, but there's no object involved. It's the paper right. that's, that's making the image. So, um, and then it's, it's processed in um, standard print chemistry, there's nothing tricky about, about that part of it. But um, it, the f really great thing about it that's fun for us is that we don't know what it's going to look like. <laughs> you don't? No, we know what the components are. We know what the parts are. But as far as what the overall, the unified 
whole is going to look like or feel like or That's what wonderful. it will evoke. We have no idea. So when we watch it come up in the developer, oh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. exciting. Yeah. Origami self-portrait? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Well, and then we can really experiment with other, other types. So this, is, this was crumpled. Um, oh yeah, that that's piece, why we have the... That's why this one's singular, is it, um, it was folded, heavily exposed, then unfolded, and that was a task to unfold without ripping it, then crumpled, uncrumpled, exposed a second time. This is all in the dark room. All in the dark, dark room, room. Oh, yeah. is which is how room. you, like, this is flat. I don't know if you yes. can't pick it up, but this right, is 100% flat. flat. It's a flat piece flat. of paper. Um, but it looks like it's crumpled. That's a fun thing. Well, and so you know, in my own art, I love the accidental aspect of, of what comes from something like this, mm -hmm. or I was doing photo transfers for quite a while and I never quite knew what was going to happen when I finished the process. I am so happy that you were able to explain this to us today because I had actually seen several, two of your pieces in a show in December. And just, it all looked so subtle, and I had no sense. I mean, you had the, you had the paper, and then this paper, the folded mm -hmm. paper, and then the photographic image, but I was clueless uh, about how you did it. And now I, I at least have the beginning sense of how you do it. And do you know, we're almost out of time, unfortunately, oh, 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 but oh. I want to just give you a chance, if, if, any, if you want to say anything about anything important that our audience needs to first, know? First thing that struck me is that you could really market this in the, in the clothing industry with a, yeah, with a, a fabric. Oh, because of the I patterns? Mean, yes. This, uh, I don't know if you've seen the new models. I think this could rival ah. the, the, new, the new patterns that I've seen. And that could be a lot of that fun. That could yeah. be beautiful. Yes. Huh. So I, could actually, <laughs> I could actually see those in like appliques and oh, yes. in vests and wow. that wow. kind of stuff. You know, I mean, there, I'm sure that there are papers that are that are impermeable, that are that don't like money pa paper money. Oh that yeah, kind of sure. Quality. And I, I know some people have folded things. folded money before. You know, and applique it in some sort of way. You know, and just. Oh, that could be could be well, gorgeous. That's great. So we're ending on a very pragmatic <laughs> <laughs> way to advance the uh, the material aspect of your art. So just very quickly say again where oh, your show is going to be and when it ends. So the show is going to be at 136 and a half Pine Street in Manchester. That's gallery 136 and a half. If you go online, Google photosynthesis uh, Manchester, you, you'll be able to find it. Um, and it's going to be April 15th, uh, May, uh, sorry, March 15th to April 10th. Right. And the opening is the 22nd, March 22nd from 5 to 7. Excellent. We'll be there. And Carlos, your show ends March 15th, March 15th down at Art Walk in the Hartford Public Library. Yes. And I want to thank you all. Again, this is Art Talks. I'm Joanne Bauer, and I want to thank the station manager, our camera people, and all of you for watching. <laughs>